Thanks for watching DataVids. We're going to talk today about abstract and interfaces. So the keyword abstract just means that it's an incomplete or missing implementation. But when we're talking about abstract classes, it means you're going to have to override the methods inside that abstract class. And that's normally where we see that. Um, and then interfaces usually start with the letter I. And then in our class, we implement that interface. There's several differences, of course. We're going to go through those now in Visual Studio, so follow along. And if you like it, uh, please follow DataViz with that alarm bell down below. Talk to you soon. I've got here a basic console application just by doing new console application. And this is .NET 5, but the concepts here and everything we do should be basically, if not exactly, the same in .NET Framework. So don't worry about it. If you're still using .NET Framework, it shouldn't matter. So right click on your project and let's go to add new class. Okay. We're going to build the abstract class first. We'll do interfaces later. Let's call this just my abstract and hit add. We'll go ahead and change this to be public so we can access it externally. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do abstract keyword abstract right here. All right. Now let's put in a property and a method and we'll make them both marked as abstract. So let's go ahead and do prop tab tab and we'll put in here the keyword abstract and my property is fine. Uh, next, let's do a method. Let's do public abstract again, int get my prop and semicolon. We don't do curly braces. We don't implement the method at all in here. That's one of the things that makes it abstract. It is an incomplete implementation or missing implementation as as they would say. All right, now let's make another class. Right click on the project and go to add class. And let's just call this one my non abstract. And in here, once again, let's give it the public keyword and then we're going to inherit using colon and type my abstract. Now this is interesting because right away it underlines it in red and it tells you it doesn't implement inherited member my prop or the method. So what you could do is control dot on that and click implement abstract class. Boom. Check this out, guys. I'm going to make this full screen. It did it for you. Now all you got to do is fill in the blanks. So most likely this property, you're not going to want it to throw an exception. So let's break this down to where it's readable. We won't dwell too much on the property because it's going to be more common that you're going to use methods with abstract. But just real quickly, let's make sure we implement this. So I'm going to do a private, my, my private prop. And that's going to be an integer. Put a semicolon there. There's a few different ways to do properties. Um, when you see it in this syntax here with this arrow functionality here, uh, normally what you would do is just return um, the value like this. When it comes to the setter, you could even mix and match it and put this kind of the other style where you do like this and you say my private prop equal to keyword value. And then whenever anyone says my property equals X, X goes in here, gets assigned to my, my private. And then here you could return it with the arrow style or, uh, and I'll get right back into the topic. I know we're getting on a tangent here, but here you could always just do return my private prop. And it's the same thing. It's just, this isn't the shorthand for it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this method, get my prop to return a value. So we can do any kind of logic you want here, get some data from a database, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's just return a number, return 55, okay? Now let's show you how this works from our program.cs. We have this abstract class, but we're not gonna reference that directly. We're gonna reference this class since it inherited the my abstract. So go down to program and you can do my non-abstract my non abstract with the lowercase m equal to new my non abstract. And then you could do um, 
let's access that property first. Minon abstract dot my property equal to 99. And then we could do console dot right line. And we could access this property again here. And then we could do get that method, which is probably what you're more interested in. My, get my prop. And we could console that right line that as well. So we should see 55 or 99 and then 55. And then with these console demo apps, I always like to do a read line so that it stays on the screen and just doesn't disappear. So let's go ahead and run that. Should see 99, 55. Zoom in a little bit. <laughs> All right, so that's abstract class. Some things to think about with abstract classes before we move on to interface though. Going back to the abstract class here, you don't ever want to put a uh, sealed here, the keyword sealed, because it's basically the exact opposite of abstract. Sealed means that you can't override the methods. Abstract means you must override the methods in it. Another thing is you don't ever want to use uh, static or virtual when you're declaring the methods. That's not allowed in abstract class. It shouldn't be done anyway. For interfaces, let's start with something pretty simple. And then we'll add some more complicated stuff after. So we'll do add new class, even though we're not doing a class, we're doing an interface. And you'll see why in a second. Um, so let's do my interface .cs, and we'll just change this from class to to interface. The interface defines a contract, right? This is a contract that our classes is going to have to adhere to. Not that far off from abstract yet, right? <laughs> All right, so let's put in here a property. I just hit prop tab tab, but I'm going to take off public. And let's say we only want to have a getter, no setter. You could define that here in the interface. Now let's put a method. Let's do int get my prop. Just like in the abstract class, we'll start it out like that. Now let's go ahead and take care of that here in the uh, application. So let's do another add class. And this is going to be, um, just to be consistent, we'll call it my non-interface. Of course, it's a non-interface. It's a class. But just so that you know, this file corresponds with that interface there. So we'll have this one implement my interface. And let's make this a public class as well so we can reference it from program CS. And let's do control dot on my interface and let's do implement interface. So with this one, let's have it return say 10. We don't need a setter because there's no setter defined. And let's have this one say return uh, 100. Now in program.cs, Similar to this, we could do my non interface, my non interface equal to new, and it's just a regular class, right? So I'll go ahead and do console.write line my non interface dot my property, and we could do console write line my non interface dot get my prop, which I don't know why we titled it that. It's not actually getting a prop. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and run that. Or actually, let's do another one of these here. Or move this one down to the bottom. So we should see our two from before and our two new values of 10 and 100. Very good. Let's move on to more interesting stuff about interfaces. More current stuff. Going over to my interface. Now allowed to put, as of C-sharp 8 and more current, constants operators, static constructors, nested types, static fields, and explicit access modifiers. Those were things we couldn't do before. None of those concepts are really new or exciting, and none of them are very complicated. So we're not going to cover that in this video, but I will provide a documentation link to where you could read a little bit more about them. Instead, what I'd like to cover next with you in this video 
is a default implementation. That's the other thing that we get C Sharp 8 and newer, which I know C Sharp 8 is really not that new anymore, but it's worth saying because if you're working in some old version, you wouldn't get that. So the default implementation is very interesting. Basically what it means is if you implement this interface and you don't provide, you don't provide that method, then the method body that we specify as default is what you get to use. So let's do an example of that. Int my silly method. All right, now in here, let's say we're just going to return a 55, okay? Or how about we do return my property plus 55, just so it's not so boring. All right, now, Let's go back over to the class that inherits this interface or that implements this interface. You'll notice it hasn't been underlined in red, meaning that we're not forced to implement that. If I come back over here to my interface and let's say I didn't have default here, a default value. Let's say I comment that out and I put a semicolon here. Now I'll go back to my interface, my non-interface. It's underlined in red because it's not, not all the methods have been implemented. We need to implement my silly method. But going over to my interface and putting back this stuff here, now it's no longer required. So in program.cs, I could actually use that. Now to actually get access to it in here though, you're not gonna use it in the same way. So for instance, if I was to copy and paste this line and just look for my silly method here, it's not there. To get that default implementation, that's gonna be used more in scenarios like dependency injection. Um, but just to show you how you would get it, um, I have another video on dependency injection if you wanna look that one up and kinda of take a look at that, go into more detail there. But assuming that you already know dependency injection or you've already watched that video, what you could do is you could just take, instead of going to this class here, you could go directly to the interface. You can go my interface and this would be more in a constructor if it's dependency injection, but still. So you go my interface equal to new. Now we're not gonna do new interface like this directly. We're gonna do new my non-interface. And that's kind of where if this was in a constructor with dependency injection, that would make more sense because your variable is of the interface type, but what's actually being pumped into the constructor is the class, right? Anyhow, so now you would see my interface dot, and you can see my silly methods available there. So we can console to right line that. But before we um, execute this, I'd want to go over some best practices, things that I kind of missed, which is that um, interface should always start with an I. So let's rename that. And if you right click rename like this, Visual Studio is really smart. It's actually going to rename it in all the different files, which is pretty cool. Sometimes it'll even rename namespaces. Um, and the other best practices thing that we missed is that we want to put these into appropriate folders. So if I add a new folder, we could just typically call this abstract and concrete, or we could call it abstract and implement, inter, or we could call it class and interface, whatever you prefer. I'm going to do abstract and concrete. And a lot of times these really apply to services, but So now I could drag my interface, which starts with I, to abstract. Same thing with my abstract class. And I can drag my implemented version of it, the class itself, to concrete. And with this interface, everything I mentioned applies to structs as well as classes that implemented that interface. Okay. So that's kind of best practices is to name the interface starting with I and to put them in folders like that. It makes it easier to identify what you're looking at if you're not the one that wrote the code. All right, going back to what we were talking about, right, we'll go ahead and run it. But before we do, let's go back into it. Now I said it's gonna print out my property plus 55, but my property doesn't have a default value because it's in an interface and it doesn't have a setter, so we can't even give it one. So let's give it a setter real quick. Pop into program.cs. And let's go ahead and assign that value. I can use this one here, my interface dot my property 
equal to 10. The interesting thing here is that this doesn't show an error yet, but um, that's because my interface in this case has no concept that it's my non-interface here because the type is of the interface. So it doesn't know that we haven't implemented it, but we haven't implemented it in this type. So let's go into the class that we inherited from and let's go ahead and implement that missing property. Let's do a private int my prop equal to 10. And then here in my property, we can do curly braces, do a getter, do a setter. And in the getter, we will return my prop. Setter will give my prop equal to value, whatever's coming in. And now we can go back to program.cs and go ahead and grab that my interface dot my property equal 10. And like we said earlier, it wasn't going to give us an error here, but it would have given us a runtime error for sure because it really is a my non interface. So let's go ahead and build it and run it. As you can see, 55 plus 10 showed up as 65. That's pretty much it, guys. Abstract classes and interfaces are really simple. What usually gets more complicated is not so much those, but what you're using them for. So I, I encourage you now that you know what they are to go ahead and look at related topics such as inheritance and also how to use those interfaces when it comes to dependency injection because that's a really powerful thing that's at our disposal now and it's basically required to be able to use that with most of the .NET Core project templates. Well, hope this was helpful. Have a great day.